إن الله يأمر بالعذل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam إن شاء الله تعالى today our episode is going to be about kindness to your parents being good to your parents We're going to navigate uh, through uh, ayah number 23 and 24 in Surah Al-Isra Look at the beauty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, is saying in this verse or in these two verses and the language that he's using. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Your Lord has decreed that you, know, you worship none but Him and be good to your parents. Imam Al-Alusi, rahmahullah ta'ala, when he talked about this, he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the actual creator of humans. He's the actual creator. He's the one who designed and created us. But Allah Azza wa Jal, He wanted to put a reason of our creation in this world, which is the indirect creator of us. So the actual direct creator is Allah Azza wa Jal. But the means that Allah decided to use is our mothers, our parents basically. And that's why Allah said, obey me first, don't worship anybody, Besides Allah Azza wa Jal, and immediately after said, your parents. Allah created you, your parents were the means or the reason for your creation. Without my parents, I wouldn't be there today. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِحْسَانًا in Arabic language is called مَفْعُولُ mutlaq. We use this form in Arabic language to basically exaggerate when we ask someone to do something completely or to do it over and over and over again, we use maf'ul mutlaq. Like when Allah said, when you make salawat on our prophets, prayers and salutations in our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Repeatedly make salam over him. Send salams and prayers to your prophet repeatedly. And it's also used this form to say that something is done perfectly. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِحْسَانًا means perfectly, as much as you can be perfect in the way that you take care of your parents. And let me just share something very brief with you. I remember when we were young and we offend our mother and then we think we're right because a lot of times when we make a mistake we think that we're right and our parents are wrong. And then I go to complain to my father and I tell him, my mother has done this, this and that and I think I'm right. I think you need to talk to her. And then when I finish my complaint to my father, he would tell me, are you done? I tell him, yes, I'm done. And now I'm expecting him to be on my side. He tells me, um, thank you for explaining. Uh, you need now to go and make your mother happy. Then I say, look, what are you saying? I think she's wrong. Yeah, I understand, but you need to make her happy. How? She's so mad at me. He says, I don't know. Just find a way to make her happy. And if we fail to make her happy, he would do this. He would call my mother and my two sisters and ask my mother to sit on a chair. She sits on a chair and he tells us, go down to her feet and put your lips on her feet and do not lift your lips until she allows you to. I used to love that moment. Um, I don't want to judge my sisters here, but I'm talking about my own self. I used to love that moment that I'm putting my lips on my mother's feet and I'm kissing her feet to please her because I know this is the best investment. And every time I have invested in my mother's, uh, in pleasing her, by for example buying something to her, or kissing her hand, or being very kind to her, or making sure that I'm kind when she's angry, or frustrated, 
every time I do this, Allah pays me back immediately and He multiplies that for me. So I used to love that moment. Of course, we go and kiss her feet and she starts crying and asks us to uh, lift our heads. And that's the only time when my father is pleased because he knows that Allah created us and you are the reason for your creation. You need to please us. How? Find a way to do it. May Allah have mercy on him. He has passed away. إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف If one or both of them one or both of them reach old age in your care never say to them even أف What is the meaning of the word أف الإمام البغوي when he said أف he said if you rub your hands like this and you get some dirt on your hands from rubbing them together, that little dirt in Arabic language is called uff. It's a very small dirt. How to clean it? You just do this. That's how you clean the uff from your hands. So Allah is saying even the smallest amount of displease towards your parents, you're not allowed to do this. You're not even allowed to do this. What about people who yell at the parents? There are people who poke their parents when they speak to them. There are people who even, I can't even say it, they beat their parents or they kick them out of their houses. They're not allowed to do off even the smallest amount of dirt, smallest amount of rudeness towards your parents is not allowed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا So basically when they talk to you, you're not supposed to yell at them. You're not supposed to go like, oh, like I'm so annoyed. That's the off that you're not allowed to do. And a nahr is to yell at them. You can't raise your voice when you're talking to your parents. I mean, you're not allowed to. You're here and they're there. What are you doing to yourself? You're destroying yourself. Allah is going to punish you in this world before the hereafter. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا قَالَ الْإِمَامُ بْنِ كَثِيرٌ عَطَاءِ بْنِ أَبِي رَبَاحٍ سَدْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا أَيْ لَا تَنْفُضْ يَدَكَ عَلَى وَالِدَيْكَ Look at this. When you're talking to your parents and you tell you something, you know sometimes when your parents get old and they call you, they call your name many times. And you say, yes, my mother, she cannot hear you. She called your name again. And they say, yes, yes, I'm here. She calls your name again. And then you get mad. And then you go like this. You clap your hands out of frustration. This is وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا According to Ata ibn Abi Rabah. Of course, don't yell at them, don't call them names, don't argue with them, and don't even clap your hands out of frustration. Even this is not allowed. Even this is not allowed. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Address them respectfully. Be very careful when you speak to them. Qala Sa'id ibn Musayyib, he said, speak to them the way that a slave would speak to his master. How do you think a slave would speak to his master? I'm not now telling you how would an employee speak to his employer or a polite student, how would he speak to his teacher? That's not what I'm saying. How an, a younger brother would speak to his elder brother? That's not what I'm saying. Sa'id al Musayyib says, وَكُلَّهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Address your parents respectfully, speak to them as if you're a slave and they are your masters. Find a way to do this. وَكُلَّهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا قَالَ مُجَاهِدٌ You cannot call them by their names. You have to say, my respected father, my mother, my respected mother. You don't call them by their names. That is disrespectful. A lot of people try to joke with their parents and to call them names funny names or to call them by their names without the title father or mother unless they give you an approval and they tell you wallahi wallahi will not mad at you when you say that wallahi we're happy when you say that unless they tell you this don't ever call them by their names don't ever do that but if it makes them happy whatever if that's what makes them happy call them by name give them funny names if they're happy with this otherwise don't وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا The next verse is very beautiful. Allah said, 
واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمه وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا when you do with the parents lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy lower to them the wing of humility why is Allah talking about wings here what does Allah want to tell us here he's trying to tell us as the Imam Zamakhshari explains he said when a bird is trying to take care of its babies the chicks what do you think it does it lifts the wing and the bird takes the chicks underneath the wing and then it covers them with the wing so basically it lowers its wing to take care of the chicks or the babies that's what you're supposed to do Allah is using this metaphor to tell you you should lower your wing to take care of your parents be kind to them and cover them especially in their old age another meaning is this when you have two birds fighting one bird is very dominating and powerful and the other bird is very weak and being beaten up how do you think the one that's strong uh, acts? It basically lifts the wing and starts beating the other bird with its leg. But the other weaker one is lowering its wing because it's being beaten, right? That's what you're supposed to do with your parents. When they are mad, you're the weaker one. Lower your wings and let them lift their wings and beat you. Let them do whatever they want. Beat you physically without harming or beat you verbally, whatever they want to do. You need to lower your wings out of dhul. Dhul is humility. وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا Do not ever forget to be good to your parents even after they pass away. By visiting their graves, it is good to visit the graves in general, especially if they are your parents by being good to their families and be connected to people that couldn't be connected without them as Rasulullah mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when a man came to him and asked him Ya Rasulullah how can I be good to my parents after they pass away I can't give them money I can't kiss their hands I can't uh, 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 you know be polite when I talk to them how can I do this the action item is here Here's the call to action at the end. He said, number one, الصلاه عليهما Make a lot of dua for your parents when they pass away. وَإِنْفَاذُ عَهْدِهِمَا Fulfill what you've promised them before they died. وَإِكْرَامُ صَدِيقِهِمَا Be generous to their friends and family members. And صِلَةُ الرَّحِمْ الَّتِي لَا تُوصَلْ إِلَّا مِنْ قِبَلِهِمَا Keep the ties of your kinship of your parents through your parents as you would do in their lifetime. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون